We already hit our spike. Five flame flame fires. Chapter 14. Growing warmer. A few days pass in the castle as the snow started to settle in the forest. Spike's arm has healed rather nicely, thanks to the first aid of Rarity and her friends. The dragon had been getting better in his mood and attitude ever since that night with the Timberwolves. A little counseling for Rarity, who started to even feel like his old self again. It was like the spark in his heart had been reignited, and his target side was slowly dying. Things were good for the Drake. He and Rarity had been spending a lot of time together, getting to know each other. This, of course, was completely one-sided. Spike fully remembered everything about his rarity, but due to the spell, she couldn't remember anything about her spiky Mikey. That part was a little heartbreaking for him. However, he had hoped he could relearn everything before midnight tonight, when his contract would expire and he'd be stuck like this forever, as a monster. At that moment, the two were sitting in the castle library. Rarity was nose deep in a rather large book, while Spike was chatting with Twy Clock, who practically lived in the library. Well, Spike whispered to the clock while Rarity was distracted. What do you think? What do you mean, I, what do I think? Be more specific. I mean, what do you think about Rarity? We've got a lot of better over the past few days, but I'm not sure if he feels the same way I do. It's last year all over again. That's not going to happen, Spike. You know she loves you. We just need to give it a little more effort, said Toy Clock. And we need to do it soon. Luckily, the girls and I have started working on a plan for tonight. We just need a little more time to get ready. Well, I hope you worry. The spell's going to be broken sometime tonight. And this is our last chance. Don't worry about it. Everything's going to be perfect. I hope you're right, Twilight Clock. I really do. Well, so do I do it till then. You should do something special for her. It would help if you get the spark started before tonight. Maybe you could take her somewhere special. This is going to sound weird, especially coming from me, but maybe you could try outside for a bit. It's far too beautiful today to waste indoors. Maybe you're right. Although she looks pretty deep in her book, said Spike. I'm not sure it would be a good idea to interrupt her. Spike, don't tell me you're nervous. Grinned White Clock. Give me a few nuts this towards the rain mirror. Come on now, don't be a fire sign. All right, all right, mumbled Drake. I'm just, I'm going to just go get things ready for tonight. Do you have anything planned for it tonight anyways? It's a surprise, but be sure to ask him for dinner, okay? Alright, Toy Clark. Now hop off and go get ready. I'll see you later tonight for dinner and stuff. Now excuse me, I have to go ask Rarity out. The dragon got up from his spot and started to cross the shores Rarity. There were a million and a half ideas and pickup lines he thought of using. He thought about playing it cool and smooth and charming. He knew what he was going to say and how he was going to say it. Now all he had to do was, well, actually say it. Verity noticed the approaching dragon and gave him a warm smile. Hello, dear. Is there something I can help you with? Spike's tongue seamlessly turned to putty. So much for his two minutes of preparation. Ah, hi, Verity. Why was it so hard for her to talk? So hard. Hi. Hi, the unicorn asked curiously. Is there something wrong? You sound like the cat's got your tongue. Yes, ha ha ha, funny rarity. All right, Spike, trying to get start starting again. So, anyways, I was wondering, bro, it's a really nice day out, and that you wanted to go out in the courtyard for a walk. But you say no, that, that's fine too. I don't want to watch your book. You know, a little off topic, but I gotta admit, in the movie, I really liked it when Beast had started to let down his guard. And we had moments of, you look so stupid. Or, well, was it there? Where we saw him acting goofy and charming. Where we actually got to see the other side of him. It said that some of the Disney princesses just got better when Ariel showed up because her char character was more developed. As far as I'm concerned, some of the princes got better, too, and if you want any better in conclusion, look at Beast. Why, not at all, darling, chimed Rarity. Let's see a book book in her novel, and sitting on the table next to her. I was looking for this, he's to stretch my leg, and to walk around sounds marvelous. Just give me a second to grab my scarf. 
She trotted off to the coat rack and tearfully pulled her scarlet scarf down and went around her neck. Then he stirred on snuggly. There you go, dear. Spike nodded his head as he squeaked out, Woof! and hurried to Rarity's side. Oh, oh, Dad, please pretend it's, she is wearing Bell's parka for the movie. The two began to walk down the hallways and to the main doors that led to the castle courtyard. When they got outside, they were blinded by the reflective snow, but their eyes quickly adjusted and took their steps out into the cold, crisp air. Rarity shivered a little as her host made contact with the snow. Hmm, I know it's a I thought. She said to herself, Maybe I should have gotten my boots as well. Or you go and get them for you. Or send them to have them delivered to you. Offered to Drake. Your are host are a little cold. I think I'm on it, she beamed, taking another step into the icy power. I think I'm getting used to it. That's good to know. Spike also took a step into the snow. A lot more tolerable of his coldness than the pony was. I was expected. Feeling the snow between his feet was rather relaxing. And the fresh air was a nicer change than the stuff he used in the library. Spike, look, Bobbins! The dragon looked particularly at Rarity was talking about. So he ran up to one of those trees in the garden and was admiring the bare bre red breasted robins, as well as an assortment of other birds. I'll take this magnificent Spikey! Spike heart took the beat. What? Did you call me? The bear's face grew a little red as she tried to hide her plush between her mane and began to hear, Oh, it's just a little pet name I came up with. Do you, I, I hope you don't mind it. I wouldn't want you to call something that you didn't like. It couldn't have made him happier. No, that's okay. In fact, it's kind of a nice word to it. Spiky wiki. He started to laugh. <laughs> Spiky wiki, I like it. This made the bear kick a little. Then I'd make it a habit to call you it more often. She started to look at the many birds fluttering near the trees. They flew in the air and made them look more like they were dancing with all the colors of the wind. Whatever that meant! No! 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 No Pocahontas! No! The fox seemed to make a beeline towards the dragon. Spike found herself over and covered by the playful pecks of the birds. Hey! Hey! Stop! The cried sliding to the infernal creatures. I don't have any food! Freddy couldn't help but laugh a little. Even if it was at his expense. So it's too funny. Then the bird started to flare away as he saw he was okay. He both shared and laughed. Spike extended one of his claws and allowed the few birds to rest on his hands and fingers, pegging at his scales. It's so strange seeing Spike so calm, Rarity thought to herself. She knew it better, but this was a true test of his ability. It was almost angelic the way he referred to a charming, well managed gentle drake. It was magical. You know, normally I would uh, play a play the audio for this song in my on my YouTube to help me sing, but I've sung this song so many times, and I've done this joke so many times that well, I don't need it. It is quite strange, and yet I find that the strike is both cute and very fine, and now I see he's so much more. But that's just something I, I didn't see before. Spike looked at a rarity, who was playfully admiring him. He couldn't help but blush in return. She was always beautiful when her face got all red. She looks at me. I swear I saw. Words I want to say keep dancing on my jaw. And still I pray there's something more. That she can still see the little trick I was before. Yes, it's a bit alarming. Whoever thought I feel this way? True, but it is quite charming. And perhaps all of this was meant to be. I know to them, a few enchanted nicknames were watching from within the castle. Well, who has thought? Well, bless my soul. Well, who would know? Well, who indeed? And who they guess they come together on their own? It's Rob Peculiar. We wait and see a little more. There may be something there that wasn't there before. You know, perhaps there really is something there that wasn't there before. Smiled White Clock. What's there? Rainbow Cup to ask. There might be something there that wasn't there before. Repeat and take a check. Stop annoying me! 
That's that little dog. Time to go to bed. It's three in the afternoon! The tanker bug picked up the visiting cup in her mouth and started to head to the kitchen. The rest of her friends said little said nothing about it, but focused on Spike and Rarity's date. Must I forget her? I swear! You better have an awesome knee centric thing after this! You better have something badass for me! For me after all the embarrassment I've had to this story! You better have something cool, you hear me? What do you think, folks? Do you think I should make it up the Rainbow Dash? I mean, after all the things where Fluttershy had been abused, whipified, sissified, and mentally scarred, do you think I should give Rainbow Dash a chance to ha get her dignity back? You be studs! Meanwhile, back at Ponyville, the sun had been a gift from the guys as small traces of snow started to melt. A little streets are early in the winter, but no pony was complaining about the warmth that the sun emitted. A few stalls even dared to open up and test their luck for market day. And all the fillies and colts enjoyed their snow, snow day. However, in the smelly dumpster of a cold alleyway, Magnum was still at hard at work making his potato radio pick up random chatter. He spent the last three days in his space, hardly getting any sleep, but barely eating the food that Lyra kept bringing him. He was a father on a mission, and couldn't let moral limitations restrict him from finding a way to save his daughter. He must have a few crackers, as he tried to hook up a pinwheel to an alternator in an attempt to boost his radio's power. Rearranging things like wires and tips were nothing to him. Mere child's play. He always regretted not sharpening his skills in advanced machinery. As, after the last three devices he made blue about his face, he was running out of materials to make his gadgets with. Come on, he mumbled. Look at these phone threads of the wire touching each other slightly. Steady, steady. I even tilted the sudden noise. Losing his grip on the wires and knocking over his device. Dang it! He whispered. And he sure he kept quiet. Somebody was knocking out his trash bag. He knew that Lyra would make a signal, so it couldn't have been her. Was he compromised? Had the princess finally found him? It? We're here to take him all the way into some underground torture chamber and beat him for trying to cut through the Everfrey Forest? All he ever wanted in life was to save some time and expose the timber wolves as the government offered as they were! Was that really worth all this drama? This is my head cannon for the movie, and you can't stop me. The answer was a large yes, as the mustache stallion carefully reached into a stag of things and pulled out a small hoof cannon. If he was going down, he was going down kicking and screaming, just like his honeymoon. Kicked up with the lid of the garbage can and ate at the perpetrator. Get her nuts! He screamed through his teeth, your choice. Nice to see you too, Magnum, mumbled the fiery main pony who had been knocking on Magnum's lid. <laughs> What's it feel like? Two years? Stanley learned his gun as his heart started to beat at a normal rate again. Speed buddy, nice to see you again as well, he sighed. Were you here, Tim? The Wonderbolt rolled her eyes. I was going to tell Kid Lyra an update on that mirror thing he's so interested in. And I told her to check up on you. Gotta yeah, say, love what you've done to the place. Sarcastic and Is that any way to treat your eyes on the inside? Spitfire grinned. Anyways, got some stuff for you, you old stallion. She reached into her bag and pulled out a bundle wrapped in a cloth. Some luts and wires, as well as some cookies for your wife. You know, not to sound mean, but I don't see why Pearl stays with you. If I was her, I would have left you about a million crazy stunts ago. I'm only crazy if I'm wrong, said Magnum, taking the bundle from her. And I've never been wrong. Only countless times, throws with fire. But you've been right just as many times. Probably why I haven't left you. To leave it at that. Thanks for the supplies. I'm still to my last three wires. I swear I go through these like my way secret cookies. Yep. If you keep it dulcy, you'll lose your both your hoofs. I'm always careful about wires and explosives. I was talking about the sugar cookies, said Spitfire. Seriously, I gained fat just by looking at them. Bill Lewis didn't know the Spitfire and fastest way to his daddy's heart. Fine, rang them. That's really the pearls, anyways. She's fine. Get a little worried wondering when you're coming home. Thanks. So frustrating sometimes. Knowing I have to leave her like this. But I need to save my daughter. Yeah, that's another thing I want to talk to you about. Spitfire said nervously. I don't know how, but 
A research party is going to be heading headlong to Everfree tomorrow morning, but they're bringing several guards with them. Who said this? Curse Magnum. Those stupid wolves must have told them about my presence, and think I'm still in their castle. Do you find anything they could use here as leverage to find me? He hopped out of the garbage can. There's no time to make a plan! I have to find Bertie now! Then I'm coming with you! No. I need you to stay behind and make sure my family stays safe. If I die and don't return, I give you permission to marry my wife. <laughs> oh god, what is with this section? With that, he made a beeline towards the Everfree Forest, in the end of the trees, on a quest to save his daughter from the government and a dragon. Spitfire just stood there with a feather look on her face. What the fuck? My wow, well, but I get the followers. Spike had started to leave Verity back into the forest after spending a good chunk of the afternoon playing in the snow and feeding the winter birds. During which Spike had the perfect place to ask Verity out for dinner. Spikey dear, I don't see the point in this blindfold. Mother Verity, I still get to see every part of the castle and would rather not get lost. Don't worry about it. It's not actually well that hidden. There's just another room hidden in the west ring, close to the kitchen. Plus, you know you can always just holler at some party will come and help you around. Besides, the last one is a surprise. I guess not, said the blindfolded mayor, trusting the dragon that would lead her to the room safely. Of the others here, we're your worry, Spike said. Open your eyes. When the white mare did just that, she was blessed with a safer sore eyes. Rarity never thought she'd see another fastest studio in her life. Yet, here she was, standing with rows of shiny new sewing needles, rolls of colorful and exotic looking fabrics, cells of needles, scissors of ribbons, and mannequins of all shapes and sizes. That's enough to bring a trifle tear to her eye. Oh, my, Spike! This is simply wonderful! I never thought I would get to make another dress again in my life! She so turned to the dragon with a curious look. How did you know? Spike, of course, had always shown the mayor's love for fashion, but couldn't risk telling her that. So he made something snap. Oh, well, pretty sick said something about wanting to see our fashion studio. Because you never actually got around to seeing it. So I spent a few hours cleaning everything up for you. I hope you like it. Randy galloped over to Drake and brought her hose around his chest. I love it, Spike. Thank you so much. The dragon's heart quickened beating as he felt the warm fur of the unicorn against his scaly flesh. There was so much he wanted to tell her. Then he loved her and wanted to spend the rest of his life with her. But he didn't care even if he had to stay like this forever. As long as she could love him, he could be a dung beetle. Now seemed like the best time to ask the question. Rarity? Yes, Spike. Would you... Why'd you join me for dinner tonight? I'd be love to, Spikey. Check 15. Title drop. This is the girl work! This is the girl work! Spike panic, pacing back and forth his course in the West Ring. We're going to mess it up. We're saying something stupid and ruin everything. We're going to be stuck on this floor! His friends watched him scurry across the room. Spike had been in a fit ever since he asked Rarity to dinner that night. He gracefully accepted. It hoped beyond hope that he would accept. It wouldn't be exaggeration to say he was quite overjoyed with the fact that she said yes. But now the pressure was on, and the bones shook, and his blood felt ice cold in his veins as the seconds took away, the ever looming dinner growing closer with every audible tick on the clock. Oh, goodness, goddess, I've got to screw this up! The dragon whined, dropping to his knees in mental agony. Sparks fed side to side. She's going to hate me. I'm going to fur or fart, and then, then she'll see me as the uncouth and I'm right out! A rubber glove slapped across Spike's face. Twycock used their magic to levitate a nearby glove and strike the ragged out of his ramblings. Spike, get a hold of yourself! You are not going to screw this up, and you're not going to say anything stupid. You are going to be a fantastic and a devil trick, and she is going to love you so much, we'll all become ponies again! But what if I stop right there, mister? Has Twycock. Your negative attitude is not going to help you or any of us. Yeah, I know, mumbled the Drake. Didn't need to slap me in the face, though. That was just uncalled for, Twy. I mean, I can't help if I'm nervous. In case you haven't realized, but everything is running on this night going absolutely perfect. And off without a hitch. I can't believe you're not panicking right now. You're usually the one that's on the deep end of this point. Oh, you're so cold! Ouch! Stop slapping at me! It's not yelling! 
That is you! My first streak. Coming to the shining of a surprisingly loud yet docile. Yo. Please stop fighting. I, I hate when my friends fight each other. The dragon and the clock were sheepishly down at their feet. <sighs> Sorry, Flutter. Since I've been tightly wilded since we started this plan to get Spike and Brandon together, I tried to be calm for Spike's sake, but it still doesn't mean I'm not nervous. Don't worry about it, Ty Clock! Smiled Piggy Stick. Even though it's gonna be perfect, Piggy just got a great dear plane. The dance hall is all policy clean, and most of all, we got a great candlelight provided by. Mwah! Spike rolled his eyes, but as Auntie Stick gave him the smile, his friends have really gone all out to make this date work. He knew they were doing it for reasons beyond just to become homies again. They were doing it so he could be happy with the Mary he loved. Mary he had always loved and would likely continue on loving. Thanks, guys. Seriously, there's no way I can repair you guys like you've done for me. Especially after all the abuse I put through when I started to act like a monster. I'm really sorry about that. Don't worry about it, said Flutter Bits. We forgive you. Our fits for us anyway. I know. So you guys didn't deserve any of that. When we get back to normal, I'm never going to stop making it up to you guys. Twilight Clock giggled. <laughs> Don't worry, Spike. I just want to see my house long enough for you to do when we get back home, on top of a million tours and errands to do as well. Of course, just get all the way until you and Rarity get back for your honeymoon. Twy? The dragon blessed. I was about to say something else when the door opened. A little teacup bounced in. As he was opening the door, we will always remain a mystery. Rainbow Cup cleared her throat as she did her best to make most of us out the door. Hey, Spike, your date's ready, she said. Don't screw up or I will come at you with the full extent of my wrath. Rainbow, if I screw up, the wrath of a teacup will be the least of my worries. Just get out there and make her fall in love with you, mumbled the teacup. I hate to be stuck like this forever. I'll scream! I'll keep that in mind, Spike said. Walking past the teacup, heading down the hallway. Before his eyes widened, Oh, wait! I almost forgot to ask you about something, Twy Clock. Do you could do me a favor? It's really important. Sir, what do you need? Do you think you could teleport oh, something that was in the Golden Lotus Library over here to the castle? Would you be able to do something like that? Or would it be too much? The clock carefully thought, scratched your chin. If you knew exactly what you were looking for and where it was, I think I could bear something. What do you need? Do you think you could teleport my bow tie? I keep it in a secret cubby under one of the loose floorboards in the history section, said the dragon. It would really mean a lot if I could have it for my first real date with Verity. It's something I always plan to wear on a first date. I think I could do that, smiled Clycock. You said the history section, right? Do you know the exact board? Yeah, not a spike. It's a cherry oak board that you split orange juice on four, a few years ago. Oh yeah, I remember. Rainbow gave her a strange look. How the heck do you remember something like that? Photographic memory, being the clock. Now let me focus on this. If I screw up, I could possibly tear a rift in the space tide continuum and destroy all life as we know it. Right, Don't Rainbow Cup. You guys, the boat is so worth destroying the universe. Hi, Sassy, said Piggy Stick. This is super duper important. Go ahead, it cast a spell to my clock. There was a flash of purple light, and something began to manifest the air around them. Within but a moment, a red bow tie door with sparkling sand cells appeared and floated over the spike. Twy clock smiled smugly. See? Nothing to worry about. Although you were a little off of your positioning, Spike. I don't know why, but the bow tie was smooshed up onto one side of the secret cupboard, and I almost missed it and started the apocalypse. The clock popped a bow tie right on Spike's neck and adjusted it to perfection. There we go. You look good, Spike. You think so? Spike asked, spinning in little circles as he tried to get a look at himself. But finding it hard to do as he almost knocked over all the furniture and things around his room since spin. I can't seem to tell. He wouldn't send me out there if I wasn't handsome, right? Well, you know, suddenly, bring those shut it! Twilight clock snapped. Now, why does he go and help take a check downstairs with the rest of the gang? So she appreciate her assistance from her little helper. Rainbow Cup sighed heavily as she hopped down in the room. I don't even bother to put up a fight with her self-proclaimed motherly figure. I hate you all so much. She said, muttering under her breath. When I'm a pony again, I swear you're all in a world of pain. Yeah, just be careful, Rainbow Cup! 
said Pinky Stick, laughing and bouncing as long as the side of teacup. Now, heart, hurry up, Spike. It's fair to say. It was not polite to keep a lady waiting. The dragon took a deep breath, shook it out, trying to take its anxiety and worries with them. As it was, that was it. The impending moment of truth between him and Rarity. Together, they would have a pleasant dinner. Proceed with all the appropriate dinner after activities, and, all went as five o'clock planned, we become the fairy creature of Rarity's affection. A dazzling stallion prince. This is she knew she always wanted. But he knew she wanted. Well, tonight, the world will become the next best thing. A gentle drink for his beauty. With well, any perspiration, he took his first few steps out of the room down the hallway. The castle was really starting to look good with all the dusting, mopping, and cleaning he managed to do over the past few days. The castle's cleanliness was even becoming on par with Princess's castle. Couldn't wait to see how the dining area looked. As he entered the room, the drink was gray and was quite a sight. It wasn't for the cleanliness of the grand ballroom. Hey, hello, Spike. Rarity stood there in front of him, looking absolutely stunning. He wondered what she was doing in her newly found fashion studio. It was now less speechless by her new dress. It looked like it was made out of pure, untainted gold silk, shimmering with the beauty of the sunset, but with the daring of the night. Rarity's white cheeks were pink with a blush, and her hair was as beautiful as it ever was. The gold of her dress made her shine like a perfect jewel with her ever-seen mane, snow-white fur to complement it. He wanted to say these thoughts that were running through his mind. He skipped through steps through nine and just tell her she was beautiful, and they should spend the rest of her lives together. I still think it's easy like flowers must be ashamed to bloom in your marvelousness to her. But as always, when he tried to say something to the beautiful pony, he found his mouth filled with garbled words and eligible senses. What do you think, darling? Erdi asked, doing a few twirls her gorgeous gown, creating a cascade of glittering gold that sparkled like the night sky. Do you think it's too much? I was afraid I was a little rust, and those students together at the last minute. Spike was speechless, awestruck by the bedazzling unicorn in front of him. Spike, are you okay? The mayor inquired, with a couple of strange expression on her face. Spike felt like he needed to say something quick, or look like a bigger idiot than he already was. I want to take you to dinner now! It was the first thing he managed to say, and immediately face palmed him mentally for saying something so stupid. Well, that sounds wonderful, smiled Rarity. After all, we do have a date tonight. Spike's voice seemed to kick up a few octaves as he squeaked in agreement. The dragon held out his claw, surprised when Rarity actually took it. Balancing herself on her hind legs as he walked to the table, hoof and claw. Tank and Jack and Pinky Stick were just finishing the feast they spent all day preparing. They singled a couple over to them, pushed up one of their chairs so Rarity could be seated. She thanked him, let go of Spike's arm to take her seat. Must have suspected her. Good evening, madame, Pinky said, presenting a menu to Rarity. They special is everything, and you don't even have to pay for it as well. In fact, these menus are actually kind of redundant now that I think about it, so... She quickly sets the menu from Rarity's house. Consider yourself a face style. Because the buffets are the best way to eat after parties. Oh, my cupcakes, we should have a buffet party! Pinky, stay focused! I take her, Jack. Turning a nervous smile to Rarity. Sorry about that, a polycake. See, so just really sad, Sal. Please, just say the word and we'll have you whatever your heart desires. Good to a 10 second spot! Pinky said. At least we can go cup well. Speaking of, where is she? I put her to bed. It's right past her bed time. It's only 8 o'clock. Rarity said, Stop a little early, you can find a little teacup like her. There was a ruckus from the kids in this. Rainbow's voice snarled and echoed through the air. I'm not a little, and I hate you all! I swear, martial art fruit user, you better have a me-centric fake after this! Now go sleep, Miss Little Muscle, Tiger Jack sighed, or hopping off the table towards the kitchen. Now, don't let me come all in there. Took me right there 12 minutes to get you tuckered in. What will you be fussier than a farmer? No! I hate this cupboard! It's crap! It smells like kitchen soap! Well, it won't smell like soap if you would stay clean for more than five minutes. And I didn't have to run you four baths a day, retorted Tanger Cup. I hate to say too! It's scratchy! It smells like a cupboard! The teacup screamed. Screw this! I'm getting out of here! What? Hey! Flame of cup! Be careful! Don't jump for the frail! There was a scuffling in the kitchen as the sound of distance breaking and yelling. Tinker and Jack and Rainbow started arguing about something about cupboards. Everybody else started feeling really awkward about the situation. Luckily, 
Rarity knew just what to do. Perhaps you can eat a bit later, she said getting up from the table. We wish you give those to your little room. Spike nodded in agreement. Yeah, he said getting up as well. What do you want to do then? Oh, uh, you see. Rarity smiled, giving a successful wink as she did so. Come along, dear. I think I'm in the mood for a little... Yes! A little... And then... And then... Uh -uh. Dancing. Did, did, did you say dancing? She nodded, taking Spike by the car and pulling him towards the exit. She led him towards the wide open dance hall, whereupon Rarity galloped the head of the dragon to the center. My, it's a lot bigger than I thought it would be. I know, right? Not the candlestick is falling in the hall. It's amazing! It could also be quite romantic if I do say so myself. Tricock! Hit the lights! And also get that little blue creature out, out the ceiling. Right, I'm going to go I see you, Stitch! Out! And out! I'm going to go You did it. You freaking did it! You made a Stitch reference! What can I say? I love the Stitch commercials! Turks, he's wondering why we haven't fired you yet. Because, boss, you need me? Uh, I did as music began to play. Spike's heart felt a little bit as a little inside his chest as he bowed to Rarity, crunching in return. He offered his claw and took it. So he began to dance. Any onlookers would have said it would be a heartbreaking moment. It was beauty. And there's Spike. And in preparation for this, I brought you Celine Dion. He couldn't afford her. By which I mean Michael Bolton. He couldn't afford him. By which I mean Elton John. Couldn't afford him either. Brian Oz? Nope. Well, what do we have? You doing a, sun a fake southern accent singing as a, fee as a girl. Trixie, it's not a fake southern accent. I am southern! You're from Virginia, it doesn't count! Shut up! Once upon a town. Clear as all the sun, rivals after the friends, hearts bug in the morning, rowing like the trees. Just a little spark to set the phrase alight. A heart to go stare, a non can walk and play her, beauty and her spark. Like they were before, oh so long ago. Now they're all grown up, well it's a love like the winter snow. Unicorns and drakes, none could ever think they were meant to be. Love's not what it seems, till their souls both sink. Rising with the moon, lost until the twilight. Tale as old as town, nothing is quite lack, but you'll tell you at her spack, dating through the night, wrong but also right, will you tell you and her spack. Uh, you do remember that in this scene, Applejack and Rainbow are supposed to be fighting, right? Yeah, but in the movie, it was Mrs. Potts who sang the song! And it only and it works if you have Mrs. Potts actually singing. So we got to have the character in this proper place. God, am I really one trying to keep her just in this thick? The two turned gracefully across the show's floor, swaying gently with the smooth piano music. Spike gulped as he did his best not to step on Rarity's delicate hooves, while at the same time trying to keep his claws from being too sweaty. The past five minutes seemed like a wonderful eternity. The way they danced seemed to capture the romantic, yet almost bittersweet nature of a relationship between a creature who was inherently greedy and the element of generosity. It was a simple waltz, but somehow Freddy fell into a dreamlike trance. And like an awakening eye, she only saw it, the gem of her heart, her most long after possession and the one thing that had only been with her for these past few weeks. Yet she felt like she'd known him forever. Was this love? Perhaps it was. It was that mysterious emotion that always eluded her. Always staying a step ahead of her heart. And as he wonders, he finally caught up with it. Spike was no pony. He was far from it, in fact. 
but she had shown her that he, though even the most wild of souls could be tamed. There was beauty in the beast. A strange feeling coursed through her body. She could barely look into those deep green eyes. The ones that glowed with care, friendship, loyalty. What would happen if they were to pursue this relationship? Her name is Crystal Clarity. She knew there would be struggles. They would have to confront eventually. The pain, the suffering, the forbidden love that these two would share, as the rest of the world looked down on them. Spike's pulse grew sweaty, and his throat tightened. The music began to grow more passionate. So did its dancers. He swore his heart would burst out of his chest at any given moment, giving him a limp pile of regrets. No matter how hard he tried, the black illusions of his past were gone. He could no longer hate her. How could he ever? She was too perfect for a monster like him. If he had to, he would allow her to marry any pony, and he would spend the rest of his life mourning and crying over his lifelong love, only to see that beautiful mare smile. It would be tragic, but when he stared down those sapphire eyes of hers, his heart told him all it would be worth it. He looked at her, where these fairy cheeks friend as she was in front of by his hypnotic stare. She loved him. She wanted to scream on top of a mountain, I love you, Spike, ring for her mind. I love you, I love you, I love you. How could you ever find it in your heart to forgive me? Spike noticed that Randy was looking sad. He could tell from the way her face changed. Why was she sad? Was something she, he did? Was she upset because of him? Are you okay, Rarity? He asked. Spike, I... She took a deep breath. Confessing one's feelings could never have been so hard. Yes. I miss my family. She couldn't do it. The words of truth just come to her throat as she coughed out the first alternatives to come to mind instead. It wasn't false, though. She did miss her family. She missed her mother's cooking, her little sister, even her mad father with his crazy idea. I'd give anything to see them again. The dragon looked around the room as he pondered. Perhaps there is a way to see them again. Wait here for one moment. He dashed out the room, leaving Rarity alone and confused in the hallway. But just as quickly as he came back, Carrying the enchanted mirror. Here, look into the mirror and you can see anything you desire. The mirror? Randy asked. Is this the same one you used to spy on me? Because we never talked about that and all those statues and paintings of me. What's I say? You remind me of a party I used to know. Spike lied. Beautiful and kind. A generous mirror I loved with all my heart. I just love so you felt the same way as well. Well, then she was a fool, smiled the mirror. But how she was me in another life, if it is something like that, yeah. Spike chuckled a little. Oh, yeah, you say that. But I do want to say I'm sorry for spying on you like that. I never let myself see anything explicit, just bits and pieces. You'll be given, Spike. Now, how does this mirror work? I'd like to see my father now. You gotta wonder if Beast uh, ended up using that mirror whenever Belle was in the shower. No! Bad my shower freezer! Bad! Suddenly, the mirror flashed. The reflected silver in the mirror began to glow, snoring aura, before it presented an image of Rarity's father. Magnum was wrapped up in several layers of clothing as he tread through the thick snow of the Everfree Forest. Rarity! called to the cold air. Father! The unicorn said in surprise and worry. What's he doing in the snow? Rarity! Magnum called out, giving a few coughs afterwards. He made the snow for far too long. He wasn't a young stallion anymore. His body couldn't handle this kind of climate for much longer. The only thing driving him was the will to save his daughter from her capture. He's so tired. Maybe. Maybe he would just take a little rest in the snow. Daddy, he's doing! Whispered Rarity. He's sick. He's been out of the cold for far too long. I need him to go and help him get home. Anybody could see Rarity was in distress. And who could blame her? Her father was risking his life for her. He must have pained him. Spike knew what he had to do. Either it'll ruin his chance of happiness. Did I release you? Pardon me, Rarity said. I'd be a tear from her eye. You are no longer my prisoner. What about you? If he sees me or come here, he'll only freak out and get worse. He said, only you can help him. Take him home and make him better. Live the life I know you deserve to live. But Spike... He gently pushed a claw past her cheek. Not only to calm her down, but to get one last feel of her fur to prolong their final moment. Go and take this mirror. I have no need for it anymore. You see, this 
is why I disagree with people who say that this is a story of Stockholm Syndrome. Beast let her go, and she took it. At this moment. And this is one of my favorite bits, where it shows us how much he cares about her. Thank you. Bernie didn't know what to say. She couldn't say anything in response to his kindness. She gave him one final hug, saying, Fuck you. Screaming out the halted chains to grab her things. Leaving Spike alone in a giant room to relish in the consequences of his actions. He left her. Perhaps too much. The dragon loved Rarity so much, he was willing to spend the rest of his life as an accursed monster so her father could live. Piggy Stick moved over to the sunken dragon. You know, in the end, he did the right thing. I'm sure the others will understand. I know, but I think it would be easier for you to tell them. You have a way with words. Okay, talking lucky. Sighed the candlestick. All turned towards the kitchen to tell her friends they were going to be stuck as appliances for the rest of their unnaturally long lives. There was a screeching at the gates opening outside. Spike knew that he had left the castle. He prayed that she would get to her father in time. He hoped he could at least rest peacefully, knowing he had given his best shot. He tried his best to be with Faraday. Perhaps it was just wasn't meant to be.